Hello. I just hit record. Um, yeah, yep, just making sure I did. Uh, <laughs> I asked chat. Yeah, I'll just pull this out here. Lots of tabs, I know. I asked chat GPT, hi, what can you tell me about the asteroid Bennu and in any similarities it has to Earth? Uh, Bennu is a near Earth asteroid. It's a small, rocky object with a diameter of approximately 500 meters and a mass of about 78 billion or kilograms. Bennu is currently being studied by NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission, which is scheduled to return a sample of the asteroid to Earth in 2023. One, of the interesting simil one interesting similarity between Bennu and Earth is that both objects are composed of similar materials, including carbon, nitrogen, and water-bearing minerals. Bennu is believed to be a primitive, carbon-rich asteroid that has l remained largely unchanged since the early solar system, making it a valuable target for scientific discovery study. Bennu also has a relatively high likelihood of colliding with Earth in the late 22nd century. Overall, the study, uh, one in the 2,700 2, chance. This has made Bennu a focus of interest for research researchers studying ways to potentially deflect or divert asteroids that pose a threat to our planet. <clears throat> Overall, the study of Bennu is helping scientists better understand the early solar system and the processes that have shaped our planet over billions of years. Then I asked, because I was trying to look on Google, basically, and in, in Google Scholar search, even for I'm not sure if that's what I look for, but <clears throat> if asteroid Bennu could it potentially hit Mars, so I asked that as possible. It says blah blah blah, basically determining the similarities or the the orbit so, sorry uh, determining the orbit uh, what similarities have been found between the components in the construction of the asteroid and earth so i basically asked this again but it answered differently Scientists studying asteroid Bennu have identified several similarities. Here are a few examples. Organic molecules. One of the most exciting discoveries from the OSIRIS-REx mission is the presence of organic molecules on the surface of Bennu. Organic molecules are the building blocks of life as we know it, and their presence suggests that asteroids like Bennu may have played a role in the origin of life on Earth. Water, funny, water-bearing minerals like Earth and Bennu can... Um, like Earth, Bennu contains minerals that are rich in water, such as clays and carbonates. This is significant because water is essential for life as we know it, and the presence of water on Bennu suggests that the asteroid may have once been part of a larger object that contained liquid water. Metal-rich core. Bennu is believed to have a metal-rich core much like Earth. This is inferred from a observations of Bennu's gravity field, which suggests that the asteroid has a dense metallic interior. Impact craters. Both Earth and Bennu have been shaped by impacts from other objects in the solar system. Bennu, uh, Bennu's surface is covered in impacts, impact craters of various sizes, similar to Earth's moon and other rocky bodies in our solar system. I'll get to why I'm like, doing this soon enough. Um, overall, this study of Bennu is providing important insights into the formation and evolution of rocky objects in our solar system, including our own planet. By studying asteroids like Bennu, scientists are able to better understand the processes that have shaped our solar system over billions of years. Okay. Then I just said, when will OSIRIS-REx mission return to Earth? It is currently on its return journey to Earth with a sample of asteroid Bennu. The spacecraft departed from Bennu in May 2021 and is expected to arrive back on Earth 
on September 24th, 2023. So in seven months. So I... Today... I started to watch my old videos, my stream recordings of, basically started here, I watched this one, which was an hour and 50 minutes, about this reality, I guess I didn't watch, I didn't watch this one, I think I kind of watched it. This one about Nader Crater. And here we are. The Bennu. Here it is. Which was interestingly recorded on the 24th of September. It was launched on... It flew past Earth on the 22nd. So there's this aspect of it... is expected to return with the sample on, so this is here. I probably even pointed it out then, or, but after watching it, I really reflected on the topic a bit, and I was like, I think this is legit. The things I was talking about, I think there's validity to it. But I noticed some things that I didn't notice then. Or basically, I I, claim, I was saying that it, it's, it is a photon that the Earth emitted out of Nader Crater. Which is here. I probably have too many tabs and shouldn't do this, but... So, the water level wasn't the same at that time. It was probably 10 to 15 meters based on my last, like, two videos ago. The 10 to 15 meters lower at the time, but it was still water and, like, materials in this region that were present. And then this emission went through it. So it probably gathered some materials as it went. I believe it was basically a, a dense void particle that picked up a shell. Basically, I don't know. I don't, that's what I thought initially, but uh, let's go back here. So generally, I was thinking, like, it spirals out, kind of like a diamond drill. So it has, if we look at it, it has, like, a ridge here, here, kind of, and then just generally, like, a pretty diamond-esque shape, where it's got, like, flatter side here, or crystal ask maybe not diamond but just like a diamond drill a drilled out of the planet with volatile materials assisting the process and then it exited and gained like a ord cloud of material surrounding the system itself that like energetically is bonded to the system that has mass, like it's a system, but it's a stable system that probably has void, stable, like, void regions where, like, space is contained within and provides, like, a region. Occupies space so that it isn't just like material but it has like a structure <clears throat> but it made me think of pyramids i don't know like the the whole bennu thing bennu like it's crazy it's crazy if i go to my videos content 
Bennu was like, here's all of my underground science videos. Here's Birdman 110, 112, Birdman. So nothing to do with Birdman, really. That substantially, like, in the video I talk about um, the Birdman of Sarastra a little bit. But it wasn't, like, a, that pertinent to everything until, like, it started to have relevance to a lot of things that I didn't anticipate. But all the way back through this, we're still going through, is... <laughs> to war. Crazy, that was that before, too. I missed it. No one can see that one. Da -da. Here it is. Just the, coming out of, not even like when I was done, these unlisted, but they're in a playlist if anyone's interested. I have a playlist that is listed in the first one, day one, part one. Almost as if there's a sequence to them. <laughs> But here's Bennu, September 24th, 2022. Not really intended, like I was just doing this stuff. And then Earth from a different angle, and then this. And then Nader Crater came along and became part of my analysis as like another KT boundary impact. And also on the coastline, really making it appear like maybe there's more to it than meets the eye. And then uh, leading into this, and then September 24th. <clears throat> so I hadn't even done, I hadn't even finished these, and then I hadn't really... I hadn't even looked at shallograms yet. This is my first shallogram focus video, which of what would become more, way more than even this. This one, I almost want to hide it. <laughs> I look like an idiot. Oh, really? <laughs> uh. The point is, it was way before like this, there was any relevance to the bird man in my research. But it kind of kicked off this chain of events in some ways. Where I started to look at systems like this. Like, maybe it, it does represent a photon. Like, maybe it actually does. And just think about it like that. And then not just this system, though. Like, many of the Earth's systems think about it like that and see, like, the potential for, like, the fractal particles that are, like, not just, like, atom Earth, but, like, atom intermediary systems that are all equivalent. And then Earth, which is composed of those intermediary systems, and it which are also composed of atoms, and all of which is composed of atoms, which are also composed of subtler particles, and so on. So there's, like, relevance to it. Okay, let's go to mythology, though. This, this one. Let's go, let's go check this out some more. Maybe... And it's fine, we'll just look at Wikipedia again. Linked with the sun, creation and rebirth. Phoenix legends. I mean, Earth really itself went through that process by going through the Earth expansion where Pretty much everything was wiped from the face of the earth, and then 
remnants, the seeds of what was left, filled the earth and rebirth was occurred, creation occurred in the process of the earth expansion with the sun maybe like tapping into the internal earth makes me think of one of those mirrors where like the actual object is in a different place <laughs> it would be so cool if even though we like really it looks like the sun's over there where the sun is like <laughs> that it was actually legitimately like the inner star of the earth like radiating by just like some mechanism of geometry that made it appear like it is this way but also it's actually like it actually is the other way where it's like the inner core of the earth is the sun that would be so that would just be so cool uh, i don't know But, um, not to say it is, I just, it would be cool. I've contemplated sometimes in that, actually, in some ways, it almost makes me think of a flat earth, like a flat earth model, donut earth model that's kind of flat earth-ish. Like a flat ammonite. Like they're, already, they're not, like, I don't know, shallograms gonna have more rounded features, and maybe earth is truly rounded like that. But maybe it... Maybe it all is also like a flat plane. I, would, I know. Almost in like it almost seems like it has to be just because of the focus on it and the like ridicule that that focus receives. <laughs> Even though I have historically followed science's line of reasoning. <clears throat> but maybe that, like, flat earth angle is a angle where, like, the inner core is, like, one of those plates that, like, has the object. <laughs> I don't know. That would be amazing, though. If that was the case... And we could just like literally look at the inner core of the earth. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. Maybe find parallels between the two, like when they do the same things at the same times way too frequently. I don't know if that's a thing. Like, maybe this, the sun almost has to, like, slow its rotation or something because the Earth's core just slowed its rotation. Maybe with a delay. That would be cool, too, if it did have a delay. But it did also actually, like, follow the same pattern in some way. Not to get dis distracted on that type of potential, which can probably detract and make people like less interested in listening to what I'm saying because of like the implausibility of some of the like potentials I put forth. At least at first glance, I mean, I just like like by putting it out there, letting it be out. That's I I watched. Um, Dr. Brian Keating with, uh, I guess, Dan, I think it was Dan Green and Eric, Dan Green and Eric Weinstein, Weinstein. This one. forgot what I was going to say. It might have been that 
it was suggested to basically like string theory was too far and quantum mechanics wasn't worked out enough yet and needed more attention first and my interpretation to that was well you know the same can be said for um classical mechanics where general relativity and quantum mechanics came along and Newton had died and really the whole group of people from his time had died and it almost was like the torchbearers were just not as present and a new idea was able to like work its way in and really supplant what was actually valid which was classical mechanics which it is it is actually valid but maybe it's actually valid even in a way where it like at the end of its analysis in a way like it loops back around from like really from an analyzing from the assumption, if you will, that the Earth is a globe. <laughs> like, analyzing that angle to also, like, come back to that, this, like, even further distance idea, maybe, of the past, that the Earth is flat, and that that's, like, the truth that needs to be, like, analyze from that angle to really see it's in the data but in the data scientifically and in like I don't know if that's a thing I'd, I'd look for it but like that would almost make me have to rethink everything but uh, it seems like it's possible I could arrive at it also in a more technical way than I've seen it presented that's able to actually be persuasive I think at least by, like, having the element that it enters into being the case from an angle. Like, it's all all things are relative kind of thing from a different... Looking at it from a different angle. Yes, from this angle, it is, it is truly a globe. Classical mechanics of the globe system, like, is what's going on. And that's what's going on from that angle. Not to say that's the case in all instances, like quantum mechanics and general relativity, they're not really, they're more best fit overlays that aren't actually the case. I would say, pardon me, classical mechanics is actually the case, and it's a matter of just how it is the case, and deducing, like, what are we missing in the model when an observation is not immediately explainable. Like, that's, it doesn't mean, like, we don't, we uh, add a new variable like we, it means we or that the model was just false it means maybe I mean, essentially based on the, the progress that natural philosophy has allowed for it means that we have some like missing aspect uh, nuance of the process this is not yet being accounted for but needs to be like because essentially yes classical mechanics is an approximation but only in the sense that it doesn't account for all the variables that need to be accounted for when applying classical mechanics to the certain processes the process is like a ball on earth flying like a tr just a projectile it accounts for the what needs accounted for the overwhelming forces or the like relevant forces at least the ones that have like a degree of influence in the detectable outcome of the motion of the system in like a truly like approximate picture of the understanding of basic basically infinity um, then classical mechanics can run into the issue that it doesn't explain every observation that we make in physics but not because it's not an accurate model it's just because we haven't actually accounted for <clears throat> the actual infinite nature of the universe 
which is there and present and needs to be accounted for in a classical model where it's just like too rough, too coarse grained that adds the boundary of our understanding observations beyond that where we haven't like uh, s picked up on some like nuance or subtlety of the process that is going on but requires like the allowance for the infinite particles infinitesimal layers of the nature to be like actually accounted for in the overall process to then explain things like even gravity <clears throat> magnetic fields <clears throat> the double slit experiment and all distant redshifted galaxies to explain things that are like the root observations because that's all that needs to be done is classical mechanics explaining the root observations that were basically where we said well not classical mechanics actually this other thing and went to this other thing and moved on from classical mechanics when classical mechanics had the benefits of uh being actually true <laughs> just not being like again accounting for this because we're like do atoms exist we're not like plus the in infinite layers of the universe on this model of classical mechanics therefore ergo plus also particles can pass through one another in some instances they don't just like hit they can pass physically through and we need to also account for that in the motions and then observations that were not explainable by classical mechanics can begin again to be explainable thereby. According to Egyptian mythology, Bennu was a self-created being, self-created, said to have played a role in the creation of the world. That's so interesting. Like, coming out of the ether, almost, like, emerging from after death. Just out of thin air, practically. That would be so crazy. <laughs> if that's what that's kind of, like, some potential in us, maybe. To, like, choose to enter the world at a time... Perhaps, I've, I've wondered, like, if our mind, when we pass away, we enter into, like, a space of, like, conscious meditation and being one and at, at total at, at peace so that, like, nothing is preventing us from meditating to reach, like, an understanding and seeing what's going on in the greater picture of things and gathering, like, a, our bearings on the reality as we just, like, are in a deep trance of just, like, love and oneness kind of thing, maybe. And then uh, it's possible to then, like, reach an overflow of understanding to then remerge as a literally self-created being. That would be crazy. <laughs> said to have cre played a role in the creation of the world. He was said to be the Ba of Ra, which is like the personality, I think it said. Soul. I think personality of Ra. Deity of the sun enabled the creative actions of Adam. Primordial god in Egyptian mythology from whom all else arose. He created himself and is the father of Shu and Tefnut. Like that exactly. Like the Bible 
shows this story where God does it, but maybe it's like our just it aligns perfectly so it's seamless where Adam created himself like came through and was created himself by his own choosing I don't know Father of Shu and Tefnut the divine couple. I don't know if this is considered actually a Adam. Like, like an equivalent to Adam and Eve kind of Adam. I was just kind of thinking maybe it was. From, from whom all else arose. I mean. created air shoe 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 air 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 shoe shoe I feel like shoe is more airy than air Tefnut Tefnut I don't know if that's how it's. <laughs> Tap not. Tap not. No, I'm thinking of like trickling water, does it? Tap not. Tap not. <laughs> Heaven nut. That one makes sense. And earth. Gab. <laughs> pardon me, pardon me. It's like an ecstasy. I don't know. <laughs> and earth. Gab. 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 G. G. Maybe the G. 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 It's like a backstop. G. Eb. Gab. And then another, like a backstop at the end. But then it comes out like... <laughs> I don't know. I'm just thinking if there's some kind of current flow. Gab. Gab. That like the word is chosen because it's the sound that the current flow path like... Is... Rather than, like, a language that's just words that are at random, almost. I mean, it's not at random. It's certainly, like, the f the, the universe is, a, is one. All is one, and the words, even at random, are not at random. But, like, in some ways, it appears like there's a degradation in the fundamentals of words, where, like, the words... The, the meaning intended and the word chosen begin to, like, deviate from one another so that, like, a meaning that just naturally tends itself to have a specific term that could be applied to it, not because of, like, that's the language's way of speaking, but because that's the term that best fits it like like shoe it maybe is a better example than the other ones like i i wonder if there's that kind of thing going on i'm almost certainly there is at least to a degree and it may be more so in symbols where they're reflective of current paths and things But it may be so thorough that like every word has a like 
reason. Like maybe I was Osiris. I don't know if that's like the ancient. That's the part of the thing is it's like it's like the Bible, like the modern. You can read the modern one and just like reading Osiris there. But maybe like the ancient pronunciation deviation has been substantial enough to lose what I was just describing, like the the truth of the pronunciation so that it's become almost not accurate enough so it doesn't care can carry the like sequence that is like the actual reason for the ch chain of sounds that reflected the meaning convey the meaning or the they like, provide a current flow of exactly the meaning so it's like in tune with almost like resonant with I don't know if that's a thing like that would be so cool if like we discovered a language like discovered one didn't make it and even like the most advanced hieroglyphs and so on are like different relative positions within that language in terms of its capacity to actually overlay it because of the nuance and complexity of the language but it being an innate like a, a universal present language i don't know i don't know I just think it would be cool. So I entertain that possibility a lot in my thought patterns when uh, this type of thing. Shoo, like that with that one specifically kind of kicked that off. Not. Not. It's almost like pushing. Not. And then like flying. Not. And then like ramping up. <laughs> Not. Oh. <laughs> just thinking, just thinking. Geb. Tef. Maybe the Tef is almost like the, like, the nut is like the up part of the curve, and then Tef before it captures the downfall side of a wave. Like, like Tef nut. <laughs> tef, Tef, f like pushing into resistance, falling down a hill. Tef, so it contains that T and the T from both sides, you can joining the two ends, and then F. F. <laughs> I don't know. Not. 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 Just thinking. Okay, guys. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty plausible. I'm just saying. What else we got about uh, Bennu, though? Pyramid text. And it's literally shaped like a pyramid. Like two pyramids on top of each other. Like a Merkaba, maybe? Two pyramid. Here with a... Octahedron. Merkaba. Really not.
Stay to the old kingdom. Stay to the old kingdom. Old kingdom. Mm. So before the flood, there are pyramid texts from before the flood. Religious documents that were used in ancient Egypt, usually to help the spirit of the concerned person to be pres to be preserved in the afterlife. Earliest known corpus of ancient Egyptian religious texts. Written in Old Egyptian, the pyramid decks were carved onto the subterranean walls and sarcophagi of pyramids at Saqqara from the end of the 5th dynasty. And throughout the 6th dynasty of the Old Kingdom into the 8th dynasty of the first intermediate period. Oldest of the texts have been dated to this time so if that dating is correct then this, this is not who built the pyramid this is, this is not who built the pyramids if their dating is correct Unlike the later coffin texts in Book of the Dead, the pyramid texts were reserved only for the pharaoh and were not illustrated. The use and occurrence of pyramid texts changed between the Old, Middle, and New Kingdoms of Ancient Egypt. During the Old Kingdom, pyramid texts could be found in the pyramids of kings, as well as three queens named Jejibten, Neith, and Iput. During the Middle Kingdom, pyramid texts were not written in the pyramids of the pharaohs, but the traditions of the pyramid. Okay. <sighs> I don't know, maybe this is not. Painted relief fragment. Oh my god. It would be so cool if this was talking about 
Birdman kind of stuff, just like constantly. Like deep fundamental processes. It's got eyeballs, it's got bird birds. Like th this to me made me think of like sequences. I found a J here somewhere. There it is. It's like, what in the... It's reminded me of the Mount Stort Bath of Lith. I think it's Mount Stort, the Mount Stort region. I don't know if it's considered Bath Lith. But here's like an opening with a center thing. Opening with the opposite though, where the outer portion is low and the inner portion is high. Whereas over here, it's, it's more the opposite, relatively speaking at least. And uh, just the bird here, standing on the Himalayas. And then here, there's a, the fish eyeball fish it's like a bunch of vibrations here I talked about this a lot so I won't get into it if you're confused I talked about it already a lot so sounds of the Himalayas earth earth's undercurrents uh, the ones about um, Birdman and Leg Day. <laughs> but, like, here it makes me think of, like, the Tibetan Plateau. And then the Himalayas. And the... Or something of that nature. Uh, and then, like, some sequence... Where the bird man like moves in position, and like this makes me think of the currents going in two directions <clears throat> from a puncture hole within the system. And just some like universal process that they're depicting, like a container within a inlet and something to kind of like cut, I don't know measure something to do with measuring maybe increasing measurement just increasing amount of stuff in here that then leads to like changes in the system until like a bird emerges and this is just like universally what happens like here's another bird here with it two arms one kind of going this way and one kind of going this way another bird over here it's just where currents flowed there in that instance and this one here is one also in a way where like it's not just like for fun that there's a check out how there's birds on earth <laughs> did you see all the birds look at this bird and this bird wow look at, and there's the tortoise here and all these like things like it's not just for like cool points it's because it actually matters like it's relevant to, to fundamental processes that's why I'm like maybe that's what's going on here is they're actually like trying to store 
information like here are the fundamental processes that you one day will realize because we know what's up Maybe they didn't even speak our languages anymore because they got so, like, good at that language that it became their language and they really had one language. But then the world was broken apart by a vortex weapon that then, like, quickly decayed the languages, that la the, like, perfected language that everyone could maybe speak was then, like, brought down to many languages. Like, God confused the world by making them speak different languages. So that's probably, like, there was a language. It was, a, Earth was attacked by a vortex weapon. The language could not be remembered because it was complicated. Anyone who born afterwards just could not learn it without the, like, system in place. And because the world was in such upheaval because of the flood, it was pretty much... The only people left were just those who made it through with the knowledge and just held on. And maybe tried to pass it along, but, like, the across time like it just, it just was lost so maybe it might be that there's some people out there who really do still remember the information and control the world for their because they understand things deeply in ways that I I don't for sure and, and I can only assume that most people don't because of the state of like collective knowledge i just go off of like what's being generally spoken into the world by conversations i come across in like popular things that are popular things that are repeated like scientific viewpoints religious viewpoints like view basically just viewpoints Where it doesn't seem like the, that kind of stuff is really present. But I'm sure people do know a lot more than I do about things. I'm also noticing maybe this is like a snake. I wonder if I can find some better that just looks like a freaking where what's it even it's not really in a state to study it Not for me. Maybe if there was... Take your bread that rots not, your beer that sours not. Stand at the gates that bar the common people. The gatekeeper comes out to you. He grasps your hand, takes you into heaven. To your father, Geb. Is Earth, God of the Earth. Rejoices at your coming, gives you his hands, kisses you, caresses you, sets you before the spirits, the imperishable stars. The hidden ones worship you, the great ones surround you, the watchers wait on you. Barley is threshed for you. Emmer is reaped for you. Your monthly feasts are made with it. Your half-month feasts are made with it. As ordered, done for you by 
Geb, your father. Rise up, O Teti, you shall not die. The text then describes several ways for the pharaoh to reach the heavens, one of which is by climbing a ladder. Hail, daughter of Anubis, above the hatches of heaven, comrade of Thoth, above the ladder's rails. Open Unus's path, let Unus pass. Another way is by ferry. If the boatman refuses to take him, the king has other plans. If you fail to ferry Unus, he will leap and sit on the wing of Thoth. Then he will ferry Unus to that side. Cannibal him, because it seems to be describing the king hunting and eating parts of the gods. Those who see in all mythology a survival of ideas and practices of savages and think it a clever thing to explain by the habits of cannibals the myth of the god who swallows all his children without troubling themselves with that portion of the myth which gives the key to all the rest, how the children come to life again. Da, da, da. Goddess nut the, as the sky, causing the stars to disappear at dawn, is likened to a sow eating her offspring. So also is the king as the dawn sun. A god who lives on his fathers, who feeds on his mothers. Unus is the bull of heaven, who rages in his heart, who lives on the being of every god, who eats their entrails, who they become their bodies full of magic from the isle of flame when they come. But as the same spell also declares, may I be with you, you gods, may you be with me, you gods, may I live with you, you gods, may you live with me, you gods, I love you, you gods, may you love me, you gods. The cannibal hymn later reappeared in the coffin text as spell 573. It was dropped by the time the Book of the Dead was being copied. Greek historian Herodotus, writing about Egyptian customs and traditions in the 5th century BC, wrote that the people of Heliopolis described the phoenix to him. They said it lived for 500 years before dying, resuscitating, building a funerary egg with myrrh, for the paternal corpse and carrying it to the temple of the sun at Heliopolis. His description of the phoenix likens it to an eagle with red and gold plumage reminiscent of the sun. Name Phoenix could be derived from Bennu. Egyptian sources do not mention a death of the deity. Remains of a giant human-sized heron species thought to have gone extinct around 1500 BC have been discovered in the United Arab Emirates. That species may have been the animal model for the deity Bennu, so archaeologists... Uh, uh,
I was muted. I don't know how long I was muted. I don't think it was that long. But I was basically I was saying it may be, and I don't know what I'm talking about, so that's fair. But it may be that like this kind of the bird represents some kind of evolution of taking flight, becoming free, like someone free, which is pretty much becoming a god. And maybe it's represented by a bird in a lot of ways because of their capacity to just fly free at, at any danger. Just, I'm out. <laughs> but like maybe everyone in society started off being just born and learning and experiencing like everyone else and then living low in a society where people were really starting to be able to like not only be like gods but teach it and transmit it through society and like bring everyone to a state of understanding that probably still had a spectrum because it required like training so it probably still had like gurus relatively speaking and all thing relative kind of situation but like where there were like it was streamlined to a degree maybe I don't know Just just thinking based on this. How do I like undo that I zoomed in on it? Oh. Okay, let's see. This here certainly happens with currents. This. This happens with currents. I guess if, I, honestly, maybe the best one to look at is this one. Is this like a Bennu one? I don't know. Let's go back hither. It would be like a backwards one. But having like a... Neck back this way, but then going back this way, and then... Back this way into the main body, maybe. Of Australia. Let's check out. Let's check this out. like a neck of the Ammonites. It's kind of weird. 
And going back th this way. Like, does this have a good eyeball? Not really. features at all. Probably starting from over here. I mean, maybe this kind of thing if I'm like in one of these, but after that, really not much of anything. Some kind of measure. No, no, I don't see anything. One thing I'm noticing before I just uh, say nothing is the uh, the leg at least. It's got the kind of the Tasman or yeah, Tasmania leg here. It maybe goes down here in a sort of this kind of way. But over here, not really so much. Not unless I like set here, but that's not not really off of there. Let's see. I guess it could be closer to the front leg. Okay, I guess I'm just going to stop recording now. I'm not sure if I'm going to post this. I guess we'll find out. Peace out.